start. Welcome everybody to the meeting and to the TV. And we do have somebody here today. His name is Joe Healy, and he's the president of uh, East CP Life Safety Equipment Training. And he's going to be talking to us uh, in a bit about the AED. Uh, so, uh, and remember that this is an open meeting. Ida, good to see you. Nancy, Nancy, so, who's here? Uh, so, uh, could I have a motion to approve the minutes of the last meeting? Got to move to approve, you got to move to approve them, then we can... Then okay. I move that we approve the minutes. Second. All in favor? No, no, no. No, no. 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 Sorry. Just one thing that yes. I'd like to change, from one member sick to two members. Right. Wait a minute. Um, That's all. Wait a minute, i got to find it first. Okay, where is it? The Vice Chair, Marge Payne, noted the problem with getting a quorum, that paragraph. One number, okay, two members. Okay. Yeah. Two members were sick and another on vacation. Um. Okay. So, second. Do we need a vote on that change? Or just to... Vote. Okay, you can move for a vote. I believe you vote as amended. Right. I second the vote. I move that we move or accept the minutes as amended. Okay, I second it. All in favor? Thank you. Aye. Uh, now. Madam Chair, could I just say something before we start getting Certainly. into the business? I just would like to thank the board members for showing up at the Slackman's meeting last month. That was wonderful. Everybody was there. Thank you. I thought it was great. <laughs> thank you. Yeah, it was. It was really, really it's, nice. It's important. It was important, and I, you know, I think we're going to reap the benefits from that. Perhaps. It was a good cause. It was. So it thank sure you. Was. I don't mean to take a lot of time, but oh. just thank you. Thank you much. Uh, so, uh, we're going to follow the agenda? Yep, we're going to follow the agenda. Uh, update on the Crosstown Connect and the new van. New van uh, was purchased after the last meeting, uh, was delivered, and is in service, and everyone seems to really like it. Last Friday, thanks to George's help, we got it um, lettered. Oh, with uh, Elder and Human Services and the phone number. Um, and the uh, guy who did the lettering also threw in some bumper stickers <laughs> that have the number for the new um, dispatch. So we're going to put those on. And, uh, that pretty much covers all our bases. Um, we finished our first month, uh, did the complete cycle, did all the drives for the month. <coughs> We've now received the statistics for the month and we're working out the process of how we manipulate those statistics for MART, but all that seems to be going well. I have a meeting on Wednesday with the transaction people to uh, share with them the results of a survey that I've done with the drivers, asking about their satisfaction with the new system and things that they think could be improved, and then also I want to talk with them from their standpoint as dispatch any improvements that they think could be made to the system and to just ask them how that first month went. That'll be Wednesday morning. I'll meet with them. Louise, could I ask just a guy's question? Do you think that the drop in numbers this month was to some extent people not being ready to use the new system? I think people were reluctant to call a different number and yeah, I, I, and also um, weather hasn't been real cooperative. Yeah. Um, but it wasn't that cooperative in February, but we did see a drop in numbers right. from March to February. I just figured maybe, you know, it'll be something that'll grow again, but yeah. people are just a little reluctant to make, make change. Yeah. We can talk about that when we get to the director's George. report. 
I got some numbers. Uh, just to add on what Pam was uh, saying, that Pam decided not to change the number on the vans to the dispatch number. So I asked my friend if he would do a favor and make me a couple of bumper stickers with the number to call. And I told Pam she could stick that inside mm -hmm. of the vans so that the people could see the number. Mm -hmm. Right. Good that's idea. How we, that's how we right. got the... Good idea, George. Yeah. Yeah. Nice idea. Yeah. I think that was a good idea not to change the number, too. Yeah. We want them to call here as first choice. And the people that have uh, come into my clinic or that I've met here that have commented on the uh, new number have spoken very well of it. So. Any other? Okay, now we want uh, an update on the AED grant. So you know that um, we applied for the AED grant, and I notified everyone by email um, and a copy for you, Louise, in your box, yes. that they sent us a letter back and said, indeed, we were accepted into the program, and that gave us 30 days then to actually do the purchase of the AED. Bonnie has been extremely helpful in making all of this go quickly and smoothly. Um, I contacted Scott, <coughs> the fire chief, uh, for a recommendation, and he recommended uh, Joe Healy's company, Hiley. Um, the brand that Joe handles is the same brand that we already have in the building and that the fire department recommends for community settings. Um, uh, Joe's here today because at our last meeting, the request was made that I arrange for someone to come to this meeting and give a demonstration of the unit and explain what additional training we do or do not need to have for it to be mounted on the wall uh, down in our area. So um, I've asked Joe to come show us the unit and give us a demonstration of it. Uh, and if I can ask you um, what your recommendation was um, around whether we need additional training or we need an additional manual or anything like that, can you tell the board what you said to me when I asked about that? Sure. You don't need any additional training. When the AEDs first came out, you had to uh, go to quarterly training. So every um, three months, the state required you to have training. Now it's built into the basic CPR program. So if you uh, take a CPR class, which um, is required every two years, it's built right into that program. So I'm going to show you how, um, when you're ready, I'll show you how to use it today. Mm -hmm. And it's as simple as pushing one button. It's, uh, it walks you through it. So if you forget everything you learned in CPR class, the machine does the work for you. It's great. So you guys want to see the uh, demonstration, or you have more uh, questions? Sure. Uh, yeah, yeah. Mind to come up here so all of us can sure. see it. <coughs> it's good for our school to folks. know how to push a button. We can push a button, and we, we might forget what we learned in CPR <laughs> class too. <laughs> we can push a button. Joe was also able to provide us with the cabinet that we'll need to be mounted on the wall and the what do you call it the tie-in to the um, um, emergency system the I can't remember there was one there was a third thing that you mentioned you, we got a, um, a response kit which response will assist kit. the new CPR right. and I also threw in a wall sign for you right um, first I want to say thank you for having me here today um, and I just want to give you a couple quick statistics that proves why it's so great that you did buy a defibrillator. Um, my name is Joe Healy. I'm the president of Fast CPR and Life Safety Training. Prior to owning this company, I was a firefighter paramedic. I've done CPR way too many times in my life, the uh, youngest being 23 months old, the oldest being 102, and I've done most ages uh, in between that. They recently did a study, and it showed in the United States 400,000 people go into cardiac arrest every year and only around 3% are saved. Reason being is the quick access to a defibrillator. Part of the study showed that if you can put a defibrillator on someone and shock them in the first minute of going into cardiac arrest, you have a 93% chance of saving their life. And every minute that that decreases, it goes down by 10%. So by having one that's readily available, you know, God forbid that somebody drops, the, the chances, the increases are greatly there. And I can tell you as a paramedic that if you're in the back of my ambulance and you went into cardiac arrest, we brought you back every time. If you lived close to the firehouse and we could get there right away, we brought you back. But the statistics are right, because if you lived on the outskirts of town and it took us a long time to get a defibrillator to you, usually the odds, uh, you know, they weren't, they weren't in your favor. Um, 
you bought the Philips Heart Start defibrillator. The advantage of buying Philips is it's the fastest defibrillator on the market. So as soon as you get the pads on someone and it analyzes, you can get a shock off in eight seconds. There's no other unit um, on the planet that can touch that time. So that, that's one of the great things about you buying Philips. The other great part mm -hmm. about the particular model that you bought, it comes with one size pads, fits all where most other defibrillators on the market, if you have a pediatric cardiac arrest, anyone under eight or 55 pounds, you actually have to physically change the pads before you can defibrillate the child. And I can tell you standing here, there's nothing more frustrating than trying to set up equipment when you have somebody you know, in cardiac arrest in front of you. Uh, this is your, your defibrillator. It is all ready to go and when you turn it on, and I have a training model, which is the exact same one, I'll show you in a second, but when you turn it on, it explains everything what you need to know. These are the pads that you'd place on the patient. On the outside of the pads, it shows you where they go, and when you open up the pads, it also shows you where to go. This unit really tries to eliminate thinking, because when you're doing CPR, your stress level will be through the roof and thinking is one of the last things that you actually want to do. Um, and then the other thing that you have in here, this is a pediatric key, which I'll show you how this works, but basically if you have a young adult, someone that is under 55 pounds that goes into cardiac arrest, you're just going to place this into the machine and this is now a pediatric defibrillator. It changes the amount of electricity that goes to the child and it will also light up to show you the different place where you'll put the pads on the child and I'm going to show you that. This is awesome. This saves so much time, energy, aggravation. With that being said, you'll learn this in a CPR class. If you're guessing whether someone's 55 pounds or not, just go the adult route. Don't take any time to ever second guess. Just put your best foot forward and, and do what you think is right. So the way the defibrillator works, and let me get out my little person here. And you also, my, my company added a spare pair of pads in here, so if you do use the defibrillator on someone, um, you just unplug the other ones, throw them away, and you have another set of pads, so it's ready to go. I, um, I won't sell a defibrillator without putting a spare set of pads in, and that's something that I took the cost on. And I do that because it, usually it comes in threes, I hate to say that, but when bad things happen, so I want to have you set up while you're calling me for another set of pads. Pads are only one use. Pads are single use, correct. Yep. And let me do this one. I'm really glad to hear you talk about the importance of rapid response because that's been our whole thrust with this. Sure. There is a defibrillator unit in this building but it is all the way at the other end of the building and I it's on a that. different floor. Yeah, I did a little walk through and I did see, yeah. and, and that's the thing, if you, if you think about it, realistically, somebody drops 15 or 30 seconds before you even figure out that somebody dropped and you go over to check a pulse and you're frantic, you scream for help, we're close to that minute. So if somebody has to run down a bunch of hallways to get another defibrillator, you're going to be at three minutes, four minutes, and now you're at about a 60% chance when and you could have And our gang may not be running. <laughs> correct, <laughs> correct. They may be moving as fast as they can, but they may not be running. And I understand and appreciate that. Um, so you want to get that shock off right away. You want to give that person that 93% chance of bringing them back. And again, I, I can honestly say I've had people drop right outside the firehouse and in the back of my ambulance where I was talking to them as I was wheeling them in. And there's no greater feeling uh, than being able to see someone go from uh, not talking to, to talking and walking. So if we had somebody that was down, <coughs> we turn our defibrillator on. Remove clothes from patient That's going to tell you exactly what to do. So if you forget everything, you're going to take the person's clothes Feel off. White pads from gray plastic case. And it's telling you to take the pads Attach out. pads to bare skin exactly as shown. So we're going to put the pads on the person. It shows you on there where they need to go. And it's going to keep telling you what to do until you get to that next step. This is smart enough to know that you haven't got to that Peel step yet. White pads from gray plastic case. And as soon as I get the pads Attach on my, pads my patient, skin, exactly it's going to analyze to see if they can defibrillate them. So now it's, clear of now it's analyzing. It's trying to analyzing figure out if rhythm. it should be defibrillating. Stay clear of patients. 
and this the, the button to turn rhythm. it on. Shock advised. And if you're going to shock, clear, it's going to let you know. Press the flashing so I'm going to shock this delivered. person. Be sure emergency medical services it's going to remind you to call 911. It is safe to touch the patient. And if you, CPR. if you really forget Why how to do CPR, CPR, press the flashing blue button. So when it lights up, you don't have to remember what any of the buttons do. It talks to you. It tells you. Place now, the I want help with CPR. Hand in the center of the chest yeah, between the nipples. Place your other hand on top of the first. Push the chest down firmly two inches. And then it counts it out for you. Keep oh, time amazing. with the beat. It's that easy to use. Um, and, um, and if you... On, on the body is sure. One is going on the right just above the chest. Yep. As you can see, see here in the picture, yep, yep. and then the other one's going just below the breast here. So it's. I, it, I would have thought it would have gone on right on the heart. Yeah. No, it goes just below the heart because the way your defibrillator works, it sends an electric pulse right okay. through the heart. Okay, that and makes sense. there's two types of defibrillators on the market. There's what's called monophasic, which is kind of an older technology, and there's biphasic, which is what you bought. And biphasic is better because it sends a quick shock through, and then it pulls another shock equally just as fast. So in the older models, the monophasic would just send one shock. So you're actually delivering two shocks by pushing that button. You're really giving that person um, a great chance. The pads can go here, and I can tell you, and I shouldn't say this on TV, but the pads can go here. But don't say it. Um, <laughs> but I will say, and I'll stand by it, if you were to place this one up here and this one down here, it works just as fine. These are, they just have to put on one of them to show you where they go. But if you put them in the, the wrong areas, it's going to go fine. If you have a little one, the pads are going to go. And again, this is something you'll learn in CPR. But if you have a little one, the pad's <coughs> going to go in the center of the chest and one directly in the back. Wow. So now, when I put this key in, let me just disconnect this so it doesn't think it's hooked up to my, my baby. When I put the key in, it immediately turns into pediatric mode. Infant child mode. And it's going to light up to show you where, where you're putting them. And then again, one pad. Peel white pads from gray We'll go on the front. Case. Attach pads as shown on infant child key. Stay clear and then you just follow the prompts like you did before. Analyzing heart rhythm. It's, it's that easy. And that's what's great about this machine. It really, really eliminates the thinking part of CPR. And again, whether you're a firefighter that's been doing this for 18 years, um, and you have a cardiac arrest that's getting you a little jittery, or it's the first time ever doing CPR, that's what's great about this machine. It walks you through it and it really makes it easy for you. Does anybody have any questions? Yes, sir. Does it matter where you do it, vertical or horizontal? You should, um, you should be vertical on the child. Yeah, you should be vertical like this. Good question. Well, they put the shape kind of there underneath that. Wasn't there a shape? The shape? Yes, yep. Beside you? Yeah. Yep. Yeah. But it won't show you because the pads are one size fits all. It's not going to show you on the pad for a child, but it will show you on yeah. the key and it will light up to show you on the key. Um, again, if you're in the ballpark area, though, it's going to do what it needs to do. So if you're off a little bit, it's still going to work for you. I know she had the one on the dock was vertical here, but you had the horizontal at the, at the Sure. Floor. That's just the guidelines where, where they want them. It delivers a better shock that way. Oh. Yep. So the top one, and that will be shown on the pad that way. Um, and again, if you do ever have to use it, it's going to show you on the outside of the case, and then it will show you again on the pads itself exactly how to place them. Question in the back. How do you know someone is having a heart attack? That's a great question. So a defibrillator works when someone goes in a cardiac arrest. <coughs> and a lot of times a heart attack might be the first thing that they have. But you would put this on someone that's unresponsive, somebody that's not moving. They look like they're sleeping. Um, in CPR, you'll learn that you go and you, you shake them and say, hey, hey, you OK? And if they don't wake up, that's when we should be grabbing the defibrillator right away. So if you have somebody that drops and you shake them and they don't open their eyes, we should be grabbing the defibrillator. And with that being said, if anybody drops, even if they're opening their eyes, we should be grabbing the defibrillator while you're waiting for 911 to get here to evaluate them. Because there is a chance that it could be a diabetic emergency, a syncopal emergency, 
but from that you could go into cardiac arrest. So by having it right there, if that person does, bam, you're going to shock them. Would you tell us about the battery pack? Sure. Battery pack in this unit um, will last four to five years. And that's under heavy use, so you might even get a little bit more time out of it. But Philips guarantees it for four years. And there's a signal when it goes low? Yes. So great question. If you ever have any problems with this machine, which I don't anticipate, but if you ever had any problems, when you come in, it'll be emitting a noise kind of like a smoke detector. It'll be beeping, and it'll say, push the I button. And the I button's the one that's blinking, so you don't have to remember the I button. But when you push it, it will say to you, battery's getting low, or pads are expired. Um, with this particular machine, if the battery goes low, you can still get off around nine shocks, so it's still going to work for you. And I keep in my database how old the machine is, so when your battery's starting to get low, I'm going to give you a call anyway. And our fire department checks these units. Excellent, yeah. excellent. So they, yeah. and your fire department uses Phillips. Uh, your police department also uses this exact same model in the cruisers. So they're all very familiar with it. And what that means is if they do have to come here for a cardiac arrest, they're just going to unplug this and plug it into their machine. And I, again, probably something I shouldn't say on TV, but then try to get a pair of pads out of them. <laughs> <laughs> yes, sir. On the pads, yeah. what's the life on the pads? A little bit over two years. So you're replacing pads every two years. So uh, what is the cost? Off the top of my head, they're around $60. That's if you don't use them. Because you said it's a single use. If you use it Correct. If you use, person, if you use it, you need to replace, replace them. It. And yep. then, but you're talking about if they're not used. They're Correct. Not used. So if, if a person just passes out for yep. some other reason, yep. um, and you put the pads on, the machine tells you whether they need this or not? Correct. So the only time that this is going to shock someone is if they're in what's called a V-fib or V-tac, and that's one of the first rhythms your heart goes into as you're slowly dying before you get to that flat line. So what happens is your ventricles start to take off. They beat around 300 times a minute and they're going crazy. So this machine recognizes it, sends it an electrical shock to try to knock it back down to that normal heart rate. When you get to the flatline status, contrary to the doctors that you see on TV, there's no such thing as shocking somebody that's in flatline. At that point, uh, paramedics or doctors would be administering different types of drugs to try to stimulate electrical activity so you can shock. With that being said, I could not put this on any one of you right now and shock you. This will only shock someone that needs to be shocked. So and that's the part where it says analyzing. Correct. Once it, it will analyze, and when it's analyzing, um, you're not to touch the person that's trying to figure out if there's anything going on in there. And if, and if it is to shock, this button will light up and it'll say shock advised. And whoever pushes this button, it's their job to make sure no one is touching that particular patient. Um, and then we're going to shock the person and go right in the CPR, unless they wake up and say thank you. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I have a question. Sure. Uh, I'm thinking about somebody, you know, say you walked into the bathroom here yep. and found somebody collapsed. Yep. You have no way of knowing how long they've been there. Sure. Uh, so will that machine tell you that there's no pulse and it won't do anything? Sure. So what the machine will tell you, if we walk in the bathroom, which is actually um, a very common place for people to pass out, to have a, a syncopal episode, um, when you put that machine on them, if they've only been down for a few minutes and they have that viable rhythm, it's going to say to you, shock advised. Okay. If not, it will tell you no shock advised. And in that case, we would still start CPR. Yeah, yeah. In hopes that we could stimulate some electrical activity in, in order to shock them. And sometimes that may happen. There's, there's been cases where I've put the defibrillator on a patient and it's told me no shock advised and I did my two minutes of CPR and it will tell you when to stop CPR. It'll say stop CPR analyzing and you stop um, and there are times when the machine will now say okay shock advised. You did good CPR, you helped stimulate some electrical activity and now they have a rhythm that that machine can work. So would your criteria be, because this is on the wall, yep. you go in and you find somebody uh, you know, that's uh, down there and it's sure. not pulse, would you automatically put the of course. On. Yep. Okay. I would grab that machine. CPR. Yep. Grab that machine right away. And again, those are things that you'll learn in CPR <laughs> class, but any yep. any time at all that you have somebody down for any reason, have someone run and grab the defibrillator. And in your your wall um, mount, 
one of the things that it will do, it has a little alarm inside here that will go off. So when someone grabs the defibrillator, and it's up to you whether you want the alarm uh, set or not, so when somebody grabs the defibrillator, it'll alert everybody else, hey, someone's in cardiac arrest. Mm -hmm. But that's just local. Mm -hmm. That doesn't go. It's just local. Yeah. Correct. Yeah. Correct. And that's up to you. There's just a little button inside to turn that on and off. Some people use it as a theft deterrent also. Are there any other questions? Sure. On the battery. Yeah. Um, it expires every two years. No, the battery is uh, four. Uh, the battery is four. Yeah. I meant the pads. Sure. Uh, the pads every two years. Uh, you say you put an extra set in there for us, so in two years both pair expire. Both right? pair expire, sure. And I was able on the on the extra pads, I was able to get a lot that gave you another two and a half years. So you have one that's going to run a little bit longer. Okay. But yes, every every two years or so, you're going to be replacing two pairs of pads. Uh, so that's 120 bucks. Correct. Okay, and that's beside if you don't use. Uh, if you Correct. use it, then it, it goes up more. If you use it, you'll need a, a set sooner. So, so you always, you always, you always encourage to have the two. Yes. Yep. Yeah. I always, no matter what, and we sell all different uh, types of machines. Some of them that um, start out around fifteen hundred. Some that go up to twenty-five thousand. And I always encourage, no matter what machine you have, what line of work you're in, that you always have a second set. It's kind of it's kind of like in the fire department when we go to a fire, you don't get to relax until all the hose gets put back on the truck because you don't know if you're going to have another one right away. If it's me that you're resuscitating, George, I'll pay for the extra. <laughs> <laughs> I was thinking that you know it's a, no, it, like wasn't, it wasn't that. I was just trying to understand because he said he threw in right. like he gave us some extra there, so I just wanted to know that uh, when this thing expires, does that mean that we need to buy two? That pair. You don't have to. That's going to be your decision. Yeah. Yeah. That's that's totally. totally you're going to have to buy if you use it. I mean, you're going to have to add one. Right. I mean, so yeah, I understand that. Mm -hmm. I thought you were being so generous. You know. <laughs> <laughs> well, he was. I was because I could have charged you the first time around. Yes, you were. <laughs> you actually you got a free set of pads, a free wall sign, and actually let me show you this. The other thing that I did give you for free. This is a, a response kit, and what this has in it, it's a razor, so if you do have someone that's really hairy, you may want to shave them super quick uh, before putting the pads on, and it's not going to be a pretty shave, it's not going to be getting some shaving cream out or anything like that, it's just super quick. Right here. <laughs> or the other thing that you could do if somebody happened to steal your razor, and, and you're not going to like this, but you can take your pads and put them on and rip all the hairs off and then use your oh, spare pads. Oh, <laughs> A pocket mask, we never ever do mouth to mouth on anyone. No, no. Um, so <laughs> if you wanted to breathe for them, we have a pocket mask. We have rubber gloves to protect yourself. These are very heavy duty trauma shears uh, because before we defibrillate someone, we have to remove their clothes. Um, and again, you learn this in CPR, but if you have a female patient, you would have to cut a bra, so this will cut through the, the wire of the bra. Um, if we were to lef leave that on, there would be some serious frying issues. Um, <laughs> then we have a drying towel, so if the person's super sweaty, you can wipe them off real quick before putting the pads on. What, what's the cost on that little kit? On this year, 25. Had 25 on this, and the sign would be 20. But my um, my mother's very involved with the senior center and the center in the community that I grew up on, so. There are certain businesses that I give a little bit more of a price cut to. Well, we thank you. That. You're very welcome. It, yes. Very welcome. Well, we appreciate it very much. Yes. And he did give us quite a good price on this. Thank you. Okay. Thank so it's you're much welcome. less than it's the twenty five hundred. It's amazing the technology that has it has even even since they started sure. the defibrillators. There's actually one too that's just a little bit bigger than this. Um, you would have been paying a lot more, but it is um, unbelievable the way technology yeah. technology has come. And if, if you ever have any questions too, um, my website and email is right on the box. My website and email is on the back of the machine. Please feel free, and my phone number too, feel free at any point in time to shoot me an email, give me a phone call. I would be happy to, uh, you know, to answer any of your questions. And you have a card right now. I have a card. I know you do. Yep. Uh, 
Now, the, the people that will be volunteering or will be chosen yep. uh, uh, to man this, um, uh, they'll have to have CPR training. C sure. Uh, as part of the training, will the, uh, will the uh, firemen be able to go through this exactly as you did? Or yes. Or come back? Yeah, they would be able to. If you wanted me to come back, we could. Uh, arrange that, but the firemen, when they do your training, um, are very well versed in, in this product. Again, I know that uh, the PD and the fire both use um, Phillips in town, which is going to make it a lot easier for them if they do Definitely. have to come here. How long is the machine warranty for? Eight years, great question. Machines warranty for eight years. Uh, most other companies are around four to five years. So Phillips uh, leads the industry in that also. Yes, sir. Well, you've walked this hall here, and you know where we are uh, in reference to uh, the second floor here. Where, uh, where do you suggest that this be mounted? That's a great question. In the closest to the area where the most amount of people are going to be either working where the activities are, and somewhere that's very visible so people know that it's there. Those are the two keys. One is the visibility, and two is to have it accessible to an area where people are congregating. They're calling the second floor, I think, that uh, more people that congregate on the second floor in these offices, especially got the uh, town clerk there. Sure. And, um, and you have uh, the assessors there, people going there about their taxes and sure. so forth. Of course, we down the hall a short ways there in, um, in the thrift shop. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah. Uh, the, then we have exercise classes that go yeah. on downstairs. There's one on the first floor. Yeah. yeah. There's already a unit on the first sure. floor. Sure. Oh, well, so oh, there is. There yes. is already a unit yes. on the first floor. But unfortunately, floor. Yes. cardiac arrest attacks ex you know healthy people just as well as people that are Where is unhealthy. Where is it on the first floor? Way down. Right by the door. Oh, right by the entrance. The on the first no, the floor. other way. Oh, oh, okay. When you're in the multi-purpose room, you go out the doorway, and it's, you can almost see it. It's the end of the corridor. Oh, okay. I could see it getting off the elevator near the, right, yes. the 37 entrance. Yep. I was sort of kind of thinking, when I asked about that, sure. I was thinking that uh, where they got uh, the TV uh, studio down there, you got this big open wall down yep. there, there's nothing on it. So I was thinking that somewhere in there, because if you go back to us, we got, you know, sure. currents and at least somebody could run and see it clearly. Either coming from the other direction, yep. you can see it clearly. Sure. Yeah, no, I understand that. And again, that will be ultimately up, up to you guys. Yeah, I know, but I was just, just asking. Yeah, I, that, that sounds like a decent area. It, if you want it, the, the biggest thing is that people know that it's in here. And again, that's great. You're doing this now um, in the meeting, but there should be a way that you can let the townspeople know that you, you purchased this um, and definitely where it's going to be located. Because you do have a lot of people in town that are. Uh, doctors and nurses and anybody that's CPR trained. I was say anybody in the anybody. building can yep. access it. They can grab it. And grab it and use it so that exactly. they don't have to be trained. I mean, and if somebody even can push a button and, and they can follow the CPR instructions, you know, that they get. Sure, sure. So. But my colleague wanted to know here uh, if you was going to mount the box up for us. <laughs> that I don't do, sorry. You'll have to use <laughs> the answer. We probably have a town, town my, person that would be doing that in, the, in this building. My insurance company will not allow me to uh, <laughs> count it on the wall, sorry. Are there any other questions? Thank you very much, Joe. You're very welcome. Well, thank, thank you, you. Very, thank you. Very so welcome. much. Thank you. Thank you, Joe. Thank and where would you like me to leave your... You can leave right here with me. Great, okay. So I'm just going to need a second to pick this up. Oh, and right ahead. How's your mom doing? She's doing okay. Yeah. I just, uh, I found out about a week ago my mom's having some issues with cancer. And oh, wow. she's been healthy all her life. So this is a, I think it's going to be a tough little road ahead for us. Uh, but she. They um, have made wonderful strides. They have made wonderful strides. And she loves the senior center. And the senior center brings a lot of life to her. Is she in need uh, What's that? Is she in need of no, she's in Millis. Oh, okay. yeah. That's, that's close. To I'm originally from Millis. Oh, 109. Yep. And I have to say, when I was coming up here today, my better half, she left me a, a note on top of the defibrillator that I better not see any Kimball's receipts. 
I started Weight Watchers. <laughs> <laughs> oh, right ahead. And since I'm on TV, let me just say I love Kimball's, and there's no yeah, disrespect yeah. to Kimball. <laughs> hey, run back to your car down there, and you all squared away. Yeah. <laughs> just don't show the receipts. All downhill. <laughs> That's why I keep a defibrillator in my car. <laughs> think about it if you want to take it down to the second floor and leave it in our office sure great. second floor the other end of the building you can okay take this elevator down and walk to the, all the way to the other end and what number is the room 231 okay yeah that's why i got that is that's why they yeah thank you so much you're very welcome and just uh this is mentioned in the director's report the cpr training class is scheduled for may 5th it's a monday from one to four it will be held at the fire station um, I talked with Tyson. Uh, he can easily accommodate 12 of us. He said he could accommodate up to 20 if people wanted to be in the class um, because he can get dummies from other towns. So there will be a sign-up sheet in the office. And uh, again, May what? Fifth, um, fifth. You know, I'm encouraging key volunteers, people in the thrift shop, people who are in the building on a regular basis to uh, take a CPR class. May 4th from 1 to 4. May 5th. 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 Wonderful. At the fire station. Can we, need sign up. Can we have an update uh, on the outreach hours? I have very good news for oh, you on the outreach home. hours. Um, item C on the agenda. Um, the FinCom notified me last week that they approved the um, request for 10 extra hours for outreach <laughs> they made it part of the budget <coughs> which is going to go forward and is going to be presented at town meeting um, for vote uh, there is going to be discussion tonight <coughs> at the board of selectmen's meeting <coughs> the fincom presents it to the board of selectmen uh, and i plan to be there for that uh, but the fincom uh, voted completely in support and, uh, and it's, it will their not be it's their budget, so it will go to the to the town meeting. It will go to town meeting as as the FinCom's budget. And it doesn't come out as a separate item. It will be part of the major budget. It was rolled in as part of an increase to our budget. I was very happy to hear that. Yeah, we all are. Thank you. And again, my thanks to everyone who went to the meeting. I, I really think that that show of everyone there and uh, your concern. Thank you. Joe. Thank you. Um, I think that that uh, really helped to influence them on the importance of it. Uh, if it is voted yes at town meeting without any problem, it would start July 1st. And Tina and I have already been discussing a proposed <laughs> schedule. And, and just to recap for you, when I originally brought this proposal to you last October, uh, Tina and I had been talking about increasing the hours on Tuesdays, Wednesdays, and Thursdays so that she'll have some evening hours and start to catch people who perhaps have parents here in town, but they're still, the, the people that need to talk to Tina are still working. Um, or for the people who are non-elders that are still working and can't get away from work but need to talk to Tina about food stamps, fuel assistance, et cetera. That's important. Yeah. Thank you. Yay. Yeah, that was, Yay. A, that was a good, really good deal. And an update on the signs and the COA. Mm -hmm. You asked for that, Louise, to be placed on the agenda. Oh, did I? Okay. Well, I've had, um, uh, I've noticed in the times I've been here, not only with the blood pressure clinic, but for other things that people will stop me and ask me uh, how to get to a certain spot. And I'm sure that they go into the thrift shop if they don't find me out there. And my feeling is that uh, uh, there was a table out there. Is the table put back? There's a table and a chair. You're talking about next to the elevator? Next to the elevator, There's a table yeah. and a chair, and on that table are broadcasters. Good. And right above that is a big sign that shows where the um, COA office is and shows Tina's name and my name. Could I just ask, too, uh, you know, when I saw this on the agenda, I thought we had talked about this already. Yeah, well, I thought so we I had looked to, back. Yeah. It had been talked about. And I looked back in the minutes. May I finish, please? What's May I finish, please? Yeah. I looked back in the minutes, and it was November 18th when we talked about it, and it was left that the chair was going to talk to Keith and get his input. Actually, I wrote it down. Um, 
talk to Keith and to find out who's responsible and how this can be accomplished. And we never received any follow-up well, on that. And I'm sorry, but so. I wasn't aware of that. So I, I will. I You're will right. I remember that. Yeah. It was in the November 18th minutes. Remember so we that. need that follow-up, yeah. that feedback from your I will conversation do that. with Keith before we can do anything, yeah. I think. Keith said that he met with you about this. <coughs> he could have. It's one of the things when you get older, sometimes you don't remember <laughs> some things. That's why we got to write it all down. <laughs> That's why I do it. Write everything it down. Written, it isn't said. Uh, I don't know if he gave me an answer. Uh, but I will, I will take it. If you look back to the November 18th Yeah, I'll, I'll look back to the minutes. I have copies of Yeah, that might all. help you. Yeah. But uh, I will speak to him again and see what his comments are about it. I think it would be very, very helpful. It it's, would be a boring job, but I think it could be made less boring. If there was a volunteer or somebody on the work release that uh, was out there uh, during the busiest hours, you know, maybe from uh, 10 to 3, and uh, I don't know if a computer could be put out there or if they could have some work that they could do no, rather than, know. huh? I don't believe there's wiring. I think we talked about that too. Is there, there are no outlets? Or there are no outlets. There's no outlets. outlets but so. um, I'll have to see if we can have wiring, you know. In Madam Chair. Yes, Judge. Uh, through to the director, did uh, Keith uh, give you an indicator as to what his conversation was with regard to that? No, not no, not. no, 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 oh. I'm, I'm asking. Keith told me that there was no money in the budget to make any change in the signage. He also said that he went down and he walked around the area and he thought the signage down there was, was more than adequate. The signage is exactly the same as every other office and every other group in this building. Mm -hmm. He even pointed out, you know, we have a sign on the bulletin board with an arrow that says Office of Elder and Human Services, gives the room number, and then there's an arrow to help people because you're right, it is kind of convoluted. He even pointed out that he saw that and he thought that was a good idea. Right, as people come off the elevator, they can see that to the right. If we're off the sign subject, back to her with the table out there and chair, I agree that with, there should be someone there in all the other, or at least in the Westford office, there's a sign-in book in other offices. They have cards, so they keep track of the visitors or guests or people that participate in the program to help keep counting for your purposes. We don't have any of that. Where are we going to get the volunteers? Why not? Where are we going to get them? Did we try? We've had volunteers uh, or somebody from the we work program at one time, <coughs> I think. But, yeah. Pam has put out emails, you know, asking for volunteers yeah. For, yeah. for different things. Yes, George. If I may, Madam Chair, uh, uh, in the past, uh, they had used uh, uh, people on the tax work program there, and those people were also uh, coordinating and helping Tina in some stuff that Tina needed. Uh, done there. It wasn't a whole lot, but there was stuff that Tina had them do and they was doing. I remember the lady from Westford that used to come over and volunteer for Littleton over here all the time. I don't remember her name. What was it? Vivian. Vivian, yeah, Vivian. And uh, she used to work uh, with uh, Tina there and happened. So I don't know if that's something that the director can maybe look at in terms of. Um, uh, seeing if they could start that back up. Uh, I know it was quite helpful there because uh, uh, there was times that, you know, people said they didn't have a whole lot, but there was time that it was uh, sort of kind of busy that people was coming and going off the elevator on this end of the building here, and it was giving direction. A lot of them was looking for the clerk's office, the tax office down there. Can I speak to the issue? Yes. Um, you raised two issues. The first is that of the volunteer labor to do that. And then the second is of positioning someone right outside the elevator. Um, I've checked this out. It is 12 steps.
from that spot to the door of our office. Um, truthfully, I would much rather have people come to our office and ask for information than to be intercepted in the hallway. Um, it, it's important to me that we capture the information that someone came in and that they ask for information. We do not have a swipe system, and I'm not suggesting we go to a swipe system because I don't think that that works for us for our physical layout, but we do like to know who comes to the office and what kind of questions they're asking about. And it is at the office where someone would sign up for a program. It's at the office where people would pick up tickets for the light and water, pick up tickets for the spaghetti lunch and what have you. Now in terms of the volunteer effort to do that, um, we are having trouble getting enough volunteers to staff the office and you'll see in the newsletter that's going to come out in May, I'm asking for people to volunteer and to step forward to cover the office. Um, this time of year especially it's difficult because people finish their senior tax hours and they don't want to work anymore. Plus at this time of year people are starting to go off to vacation homes, um, uh, people go to Maine for the whole summer, things like that. Um, frankly, Mary, I don't have the staff to put people there and to also have my front desk covered and it's imperative to have the front desk covered so that Tina doesn't have to answer the phone, um, so that I don't have to answer the phone when I'm in the middle of trying to do budget stuff, doing the accounts, doing the MART report, things that I really don't want to be interrupted, payroll, things that really requires concentration. Um, so I, I really don't have the staff to cover that, to cover both places. The disadvantage of what I suggested is that if you get a volunteer there, you're taking away time and hours of a person that's on a work tax program. You know, that might be useful. I, and I, what I'm saying is I yeah, can't even get enough tax isn't, people. Yeah, isn't equal, yes. I can't even get enough tax yeah. people. And I, I have to be honest with you, with the exception of Vivian, anyone else that we've ever placed when that was a desk there, anyone else has said that it was so dull they did not want to do it and yeah. they asked to be relieved. Yeah, I, I guess. I'm agree. sorry to say, but that, I that's. I agree with that. <laughs> we have. Uh, you can take George. Okay, George. No, no, you can take Nancy. Go ahead. Okay. Um, I happen to agree because um, I think her name was Mary that was sitting out at the desk. She was bored constantly. Even Mary though Dorsey. She was, even though she was stationed there, she wasn't there. She was walking around, and she, to her credit, she was looking for things to do, mm -hmm. but she was bored, bored, bored. Um, a lot of people who come to that floor in that area know where they're going. So very seldom would she get someone asked uh, that needed help. That's just my own observation. Mm -hmm. Yes, George. Madam Chair, to the director, when the people come to the CO office <coughs> and when they come to Tina, are you taking that data down irregardless as to what they come there for, if they're looking for this? Uh, are we using that data as a portion of support? You're reading our minds, George. You're reading our minds. <laughs> we just had this discussion last week about how we want to find a very efficient way to keep track of all the people who just come and ask a question what goes down as general inquiry. We don't want to guess at that anymore. We want to be able to accurately say, uh, you know, on Monday, 12 people stopped in and made general inquiry questions. Um, 10 people ask about Minuteman Senior Services. Uh, five people ask about um, activities or ask for a newsletter or whatever. It, it, this is very much where we're aiming in Good. terms of keeping track. Good. Thank you. Yeah. yeah. What did you decide? We decide we want to do it. We're trying to find a very efficient way to do it. Mm. Um, so and again, it, it, we want them at the office, Mary. We don't want them out in the hallway randomly asking yeah. questions of people. Mm -hmm. We really want them to come to the office. Yeah. And that's the other way that I try to add some quality control um, because I listen and I make sure that the information that goes out is accurate. Mm -hmm. We get very strange requests sometimes, very off-the-wall kinds of requests. That doesn't surprise me. Yeah. yeah. And, and often they can, be, they can be served in some way. Yes. Any other questions? So we know that they are going to have, you're going to have this general inquiry and hopefully it'll start before the start of the next fiscal year. Yes. And that will be part of uh, uh, 
Right now, we take all the phone calls. We keep yes, track of yeah. all the phone calls, mm -hmm. but we want to deal with the people who just wander in. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I think that's also important. Okay. Uh, and uh, I was hoping Keith would be here. Do we have an update? Have you heard of anything about appointments to the board? Uh, there have been no additional applicants. Can people apply since it was, an, you know, wasn't there a posting and a cutoff date? Yeah, it was Can a little murky. We had a now? cutoff date, but at the last meeting we were kind of talking about the fact that. So if somebody were to inquire, they could fill out the mm -hmm. form and submit it? Uh, I know somebody I, that might be interested. I did have a question for Ida. At the last meeting, Ida, you said you wanted to withdraw your application. Are you standing by that? For right now, yes. Okay. I would suggest that if anybody's interested that they find and have someone just get the application and talk to uh, Keith, get whatever we need to do and, and let them worry about timetable and, and who can come. They'll, okay. They know that we need people. And Bob, can we and get Ida's statement into the minutes? Can we get Ida's statement into the minutes withdrawing. that she wants to withdraw? I, did I thought we did that last month. It was in the last month. It was in the last, yeah, it was okay. in the minutes. Uh, could we advertise in the newsletter that we're looking for? Sure. Yes. For it's applicants. in the last minute. I think that would be good. Next newsletter will be the uh, June newsletter. Yeah. Somebody on the board wants to write a little blurb about the vacancies. Mm -hmm. Anybody volunteering? We were the rules and regulations. Huh? We can do that. Write a blurb about the vacancy. Membership okay. committee. Yeah. Okay. We can do it. Good. They come, uh, they're in the packet. Yeah, I've got them yeah. someplace. Oh, in the, in the packet. Yeah, okay. Okay, we're down to new business now. Uh, and the membership committee is going to give us some information. Um, I don't have the date, but quite some time ago. Well, we're not to that yet. Okay. Um, we we'll do the rules and regs first. Okay. It was agreed that the rules and regs should be reviewed you know, in March of every year by the membership committee. And then also Bob brought to our <coughs> attention that the rules and regs perhaps should be changed because we don't hold meetings. Remember what we went through last year in July? We, there was no meeting in July, but the rules and regs say that we will, that's our month to have new offices appointed and everything. So we are recommending that we just Modify the rules and regs. Like, uh, you have a pat. You have them in your packet. Five point four. The annual meeting of the members of the COA shall be held on the second Monday in June rather than July. Because we don't have a meeting in July. And then remember last year we had to scramble to legalize it and make a temporary change, but the rules and regs were not changed. So it should read, perhaps, the annual meeting of the members of the COA shall be held on the Sunday in June for the purpose of electing officers as proposed by the nominating committee. And then the, the, with that, right. there's a second. Go ahead. And then you go down on the, you go to Four point one. Four, right? the next one, 4.1. 4 4.1? 4 yeah, the nominating oh, committee. Oh, yes. The nominating committee shall consist of three members who are appointed by the chairperson at the May meeting because you have to have your nominating committee working to, you know, talk to and work on officers Maybe. in May if we're going to meet in June. And then there would be another place, too. It would Six, be... 6.12. Yep, I got that one, Mark. 6.1.2? Page 3. Officers of the COA shall be elected at the annual COA meeting by a majority vote of the members present and shall take office at the end of the June meeting. Instead of at the 1st of July? Okay. Or uh, the 1st of July, whatever the board's, I mean, I, you know, it's up to the board. Could be the 1st of July instead of the end of June. Well, <coughs> make a motion and you and, know which to write. Right. Well, I don't know. What are you recommending? We're recommending. Actually, the, if you do it with July 1st, that puts it in sync with the um, count fiscal year, right? Right. So it might make sense to have it say July 1st okay. because the fiscal year starts July 1st. The 1st of July each year. Okay. Right. Okay. Could I 
Go ahead. Perhaps add one other thing. Yeah. I made an. I, I brought this up a while back, and one of the things I did was an Article 514. Uh, well, you might want to deal with that as a separate issue on the, on the uh, elimination of a meeting because we, there is nothing there. And I put in a 514 that said a majority vote of members of the council may decide to eliminate a meeting by majority vote at least one month prior to that meeting. So that if we want to go in July, we can vote in June to not have one in July. Oh, you're adding, you're recommending? Yeah. Five, under 5.1. 5 well, we can do that afterwards. Well, if we're going to be changing the minutes, we might as well get them changed for the year. So, I mean, I don't you think? Why? It just allows the <coughs> elimination of a meeting in the summer. So, can you want to, did everybody catch that and understand what he just said? Yeah. No, we repeat it both. Yeah, okay. under 5.1 on page two. want to do it as two separate two. motions? This is, this is to eliminate. No, as I'm, I'm going to take this as, as a motion in a second. The motion in a second were, first of all, to change the annual meeting from July to June so that new officers will take office July 1st. Okay. Article 4 will read, the uh, annual meeting of the members of the council shall be on the second Monday in June for the purpose of electing officers as proposed by the nominating committee. 541 says the nominating committee shall consist of three members to be appointed by the chair at the May meeting, and the committee shall accept nominations for all officer positions and preside over the election. 612 says the officers council shall be elected at the annual meeting prior to a majority vote, uh, excuse me, by a majority vote of the members present and shall take office on the 1st of July each year. Uh, so for the first day of July. Those three pieces all hang together because they all right. move it from July to June. And then the other one that I recommended right. was Article 514 which would be a new one, a majority vote of the members of the council may decide to eliminate a meeting by majority vote at least one month prior to that meeting. And, and, and going back one step there, uh, uh, the nominating committee is going to preside over the June meeting, right? They're going to preside over the election. The election, that's what I mean, election. Right. In June. Right. Okay. He'll send us out in a minute, anyhow. Right. The, the question reasons. I would raise on the second part of that, Bob, is whether it's necessary for you to call out in the rules and regs that this group can choose not to have a meeting. Right. Because I believe that this group could choose not to have a meeting any time that they want. Uh, my, my understanding was that w at the time was that somebody was concerned that there was really nothing in the rules and regs that said that we could do that. So I was just putting some, I was just suggesting we put something in. I mean, just as you could choose to meet on a different day because of a holiday or whatever, right? You can and that's also why we put that in as a, as a, as a And addition. certainly, it's been the practice in the past. You've chosen to not meet in what July? Or yeah, but I just couple of years. Four one, yeah. Madam Chair. Yes, Scott. I would say that we leave as Bob has it, because before the town was sort of kind of not really tune in on the uh, the open meeting law and mm -hmm. like now everybody has to comply with the open meeting law so that way by having that provision in there when we do it we can also issue a notice to be posted yes it said that there's not going to be a meeting so I, I think uh, it's good that we just leave it in there for the sake of saying, yeah, we do have the ability to cancel a meeting and put the notice out. Yeah, I agree. Yeah. You have that, Bob? Yep, yeah. it's all in there. I was moved, it was moved by Marge Payne, seconded by Barbara Cam to allow the elimination of a meeting in the summer uh, by changing the rules and regulations. And then I- Only in the summer? by changing a meeting. Um, right, because it doesn't refer to summer. To allow the elimination of a meeting, um, was to allow an elimination meeting by a new article in the uh, Rules and regs, i.e., Article 1 4, and then I put it in. 
and to allow to change the annual meeting from July to June so new offices can take office July 1st for the new fiscal year and then i.e. the uh, articles that we also stated and that and now we just need to take a vote so read the one that's 5.1.4 to me one more time please Sorry. Okay, 5.14 says a majority vote of the members of a council may decide to eliminate a meeting by majority vote at least one month prior to that meeting. Okay, that's clear, I think. Doesn't refer to the summer. Yeah. Right. Some. Uh, yes. Uh, I, I have a question, Madam Chair. Yes, George. Uh, I think that we ought to have provision in there, whereas that if we get such in climate weather that the town closes... Uh, uh, because of that weather, if there's a meeting scheduled, I think that we ought to have something in there if the town is is closed. Is closed. The building I, I, is closed. Yeah, the building, if the town is closed, then, you know, it's automatic. Any meeting would also come under that provision as being closed. Can I speak I to that? I don't think we need to do that, do we? Yes. May I speak to that? that we actually sure. had that situation happen this last winter. It's been a very snowy winter, and we had several situations in which there were meetings scheduled. And the town clerk makes the announcement that the building is closed and that the meetings that were scheduled are canceled. And then it's the responsibility <coughs> of each individual board to repost a new meeting. So I don't think, again, it's necessary in your rules and regulations to call out that. I, that's already taken care of. But to go back to what you were saying again, Bob, I, I just don't know if it's necessary for you to put in there, for example, that you need to decide a month in advance. You couldn't decide to have a meeting except at a meeting, which would have to be in advance and would have to have a quorum. Mm -hmm. So I'm just not sure that you need to even include anything in there about deciding not to have a meeting. That's just part and parcel of, of what you could do. We you have a quorum here right now. You, this is a, an open meeting that is legal and is scheduled. You could choose at this meeting to not meet the next month. There's no way that you could choose to do that in the middle of the month because it's not a meeting and you don't have a quorum. <coughs> Judge. The only, the, only, the only provision here would be is that it gives the board uh, a particular time, as Bob has it here, in which it's been uh, tradition that uh, we always uh, shut down in July. So I think that uh, a lot of people uh, always wonder are we going to close down or not? Because people wanted to make schedules and so forth and so on. So me personally, I would I would say that it would be good for the board to give the board members head up where yeah, that they oh. said that. It, it, it has to be a month's notice because it would have to be done at the yeah, previous meeting. Yeah, yeah. You so, would always have a month's notice. Right, so it would give us heads up. You yeah, can't would, decide between meetings not to meet. Yeah, I understand what you said because you said the vote. That means that you got to have a quorum. But I think that it has uh, to be a the, the, the vote can be there as long as we do it prior to, and that uh, it just gives us planning opportunity as members on the board. The issue, I think, is whether it has to be written in the rules and regs. Well, we got everything else written down there to do this, do that, do this, do that. I, I find no need not to. All right. Actually, but I've, got, we, but I've we, gathered from this we discussion. Of, we eliminated a lot of stuff from the rules and regs when right. we did them because yeah. just to make it as, uh, but this to me seems like something that uh, it, it raises a questionable issue and, and, and resolves it. That's all. Yeah. That's up to you. What I've gathered from the discussion is that uh, what Bob has down there is that we will not be having a July board meeting. No, it doesn't no, say that. No. It just says. Oh, okay. It just says a, a majority vote of the council may de determine to eliminate a, me a meeting by a majority vote at least one month prior to the meeting, and all that's doing is setting the uh, the way that you can do it. You, you could vote not to have the August meeting instead of the oh, July okay. meeting, but you, if okay. you did it, you'd do it. Well, not July. to have a December meeting. Okay. <laughs> Thank you for enlightening me. So, so. So, Madam Chair, we voted on the motion because that what Bob has down here is not an amendment because right. we've been moved and second based on the recommendation as to what they came. He just added one more on to it as a change for what they came to us for. Yes. So we should be ready to vote 
on it. I agree. All in favor? Aye. 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 Nobody's opposed. Okay. Thank you. Everybody vote? Right. Yeah. Right. <coughs> Everybody vote. Yeah. Now we have something that is uh, kind of Greek to me, but proposal for chit chat club. Yeah. Oh, no, you have another table of contents. George. The membership committee. Membership committee. Mary? Oh, oh, I'm sorry. Table of contents for okay. COA board member handbook. I'm sorry. Bob. Thank you. I'll take this. Please. Great. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Um, oh, good. One of the things that the membership committee was charged with was to develop an orientation packet for new board members, and we have establish that kind of as a priority given the fact that we hope to have new board members fairly soon <laughs> sooner than later for sure and so we sat down interrupt me whenever partner in crime here <laughs> Barbara and I and we put together a table of contents of the things that we thought should be con in a packet what we envision is having a three ring binder in the office but then the a new board member would be given a copy of the packet to have so it could be used as a reference and so these are the items that we we didn't want to bring every single item here but we wanted to get your feedback about the content anyway and so that we can proceed that's basically what this is so we suggested that the hat should be a list of current board members obviously with their names etc so it's hard to get to remember people the current rules and regs should definitely be in there. The memorandum of agreement between the Board of Selectmen and the Count COA. The code of conduct and ethics. Now we realize that all new members get that from Diane Crory. No. No? I was handed a copy when I was sworn in. Okay. I don't remember a copy, but we all have to take an ethics. We do have to take that, but it's very important. Yeah. The Code of Conduct and Ethics, and we thought by including it in this, it would s emphasize the importance of it. it. And they'd have it as a reference, yep. and et cetera. And then the um, sexual harassment policy of the town, because that's another one that is a very important thing <coughs> that people need to be aware of. <coughs> and we have asked the friends to develop a statement regarding the relationship between the Council on Aging and the friends, because we feel that's critically important that a new board member understand the relationship of the two groups. Okay? Um, a job description. Of a board member. Of a board member. A board member, member. A board member and the friends. Right. Mm -hmm. The most recent annual report is submitted by the director because that would give a person a framework to kind of see what's been going on for the in the past year. Um, the guide that Emmett, um, the yeah. state puts out, which yeah. actually Louise went to the last last year in April, I think, or, or yeah. no, you yeah. went in the summer, but it was the yeah. April yeah. revision. This guide was revised; it gets revised every year, and the April 2013 copy uh, Louise yeah. brought back to us. So that's why it says a current guide I for think board we members. We all have the 2012. We so well, there is an ap the last time it was no. revised was April of 2013. It's probably going to be revised again shortly. So, and then the uh, board matrix is this um, sheet that the state puts out also that kind of explains, you know, the the relationship between um, the board members, the board chair, the director, and the coordinator. And we thought that would be a handy reference. And that would be it. Can you send me an email oh. copy of that so I can pass it to the next? Sure. Uh, Barry. Yeah. Yeah, one thing that seems to be glaringly absent is a copy of the open meeting law. Oh, good point. And <laughs> that, that comes up oh, on a regular I basis. Think I, have right. I think I have that. You're, You're absolutely right, though. Thank you. You're right. And that reminds me, Barry, that I will again ask the town clerk if she's able to arrange that training session on the open meeting law. It was discussed, but I haven't heard anything further about it for All right, we can get it. maybe two months. Yeah, open meeting law. Yeah. Charge. Uh, Madam Chair, um, to the committee uh, spokesperson, 
What do you envision in pages uh, of this uh, orientation package? Because if you talk about the town equal opportunity, discrimination, sexual harassment policy, you're going to put all of that in there? That's not very big. Uh, no, yeah. But what the uh, handout that I received, I think we were thinking, remember we had a copy of that? Uh, Hold on. Well, I would like to know what you envision as far as, as, far uh, as, as far as pages go. And that's the three pages. It's that's three pages. Three pages. Is anyone going to proofread all this so, after so. you compile it before well, it goes? Well, we would bring it. Yes. Written. Pardon me? These things are already written. They're already They're written. Already I mean, written. we're not changing anything. We're putting a copy in there. This is a town document. Right. Okay. And so is the MOA, and so are yeah. the rules and regs. <laughs> The open meeting law. Now that we might have to, I mean, you're not no, going to put I, the I, whole. That, there's that. a handout okay. on that. Yeah. 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 So, George, to answer your question, total number of pages. Are you asking? Yeah, I just want to get a rough idea of what we're talking about for pages. Well, um, no, it might be. I don't know, 25, 30, but I don't think it's going to be that many. Yeah. And we don't have that many board members that come along. It's not going to be that costly yeah, I, an issue. I, I, I hope you I, would make one copy for each of the board members when this gets what, completed. Oh, yeah. yeah. I mean, so that everybody would have, I think, in the, initially. And make and sure that. And it would that have to be updated as, you know, the board changes, yeah. the list of yeah. board members. That That's one sheet. And that would have to be updated at if, when there were changes. So what, what, we would just, go ahead. Excuse me, Madam Chair. Yes, would it be too much to ask uh, if uh, tentatively that you could put a package together as to what you have here we're now going to do that. as to going what to do is that. what and, and to, then yeah we just wanted to get this um, run this by you we, we wanted your feedback and for like thing. you know that recommendation that Barry made is is yeah. a really good one and we we're not we're not perfect we're picking your brains well I, I personally think you've done an excellent job no. And make sure everything used both sides of the paper because sometimes it's oh, not right. used. Definitely. Uh, but I think it would be valuable, and to have it all in one notebook makes a very mm -hmm. easy reference for any board member to look up. Well, and then you know when we have a new board member, it will be a great reference for them and help them get up to speed and, yes, and kind definitely. of control the learning curve a little. Yeah. I know I felt very lost yeah, when I started. Yeah. So. Are you looking, for, Madam Chair? Are you looking for a vote on this? No. No. If we, you know, I think if okay. if you if you yeah, you know give us your blessings and say proceed, that's well, our I said plan. proceed myself. Well, our plan <laughs> is to put it together, and then we wouldn't do anything without come bringing it back right. to you. Well, I understand that. Yeah. Well, you've done so. the right. But it wouldn't be affected if you did. <laughs> right. <laughs> if you want a vote so. to accept the. Table of contents is what will be in. She said no. No, no, no. It's not just information. We we'll just give you. We're, just, we're giving you yeah. feedback and you know and and making sure that you felt okay, yeah. kind of with the direction we were going. And if you come up with something else, just add it on. Well, uh, let us know. One of you oh, may either, think of if something. If we come up with something, yes. but even if you come up with something else, let us know. just add on to it. That's what I meant by does anyone proofread? I I wanted should have said feedback. You know, well, yes, we will, but That's that right. would take almost a whole yeah. meeting. Okay. We'd have to give it out probably in advance so people could come right. prepared and everything. So, Madam Chair, we'll I'm have to, Madam Chair, I might have to excuse myself. I'm sorry, George. I might have to excuse myself. Oh, I thought you were in the phone. I'm excuse Well, can you, can you stay for item B? It's cutting it close. Okay. You can do it in about three or four minutes. I probably can. If you leave, George, I will not take it personally. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, go ahead. <laughs> so, um, I could say something, but I won't. <laughs> Barbara McRae and Tina came to me to talk about a problem that they had noticed at, at the center of an unserved population. Um, and what they were talking about was something that in the past was called the Chit Chat Club, which was a uh, twice a week meeting um, intended for people who need more structure and need more assistance, but are not yet ready to go to someplace like West Groton Daycare. 
So this is aimed at the senior who's perhaps uh, a little confused, who's still living at home, maybe even independently, but maybe missing out on things because they forget to make their bus appointment or they forget that things are happening at the center so they don't get an opportunity to participate because they show up a day late. Um, just had that happen last week, by the way. Someone came into the center ready to come to something and they were a day late on the activity. Uh, so the proposal on the table is to um, put together a twice a week morning session. This is again following this outline of the Chit Chat Club, which he has it been eight years maybe since oh. the Chit Chat Club was active? Longer, longer than that. It, it's more like I think <coughs> 16 years ago. Uh, wow. That, oh, wow. 14 years ago. Yeah. How Carolyn well Harlow it? ran that program oh, when I was, was yeah. here before. Ran from 9 in the morning to 1 o'clock. Um, same room every time, same staff every time. Different activities, but led by the same people. Uh, seniors would come, they came downstairs for lunch, and then at 1 o'clock they got the bus to go home. Now, the interesting thing is that we had only just started talking about this. We've already been approached by three family members who have family members that they would like to include in it as soon as we start it. So I don't think we're going to have any trouble with population. And I talked with Carolyn quite a bit about when she was running the program, and she said it pretty steadily stayed at about eight people. Uh, whenever she lost someone out of the program because they either deteriorated and went to um, another living situation or went to West Groton, she would pick up another person into the program. Um, some of the di differentiation between this program and a program like West Groton is we're not taking people who are in elopement risk. We're not a locked facility. We're not taking people who are wanderers. They need to be someplace which has more control than we have. Uh, we wouldn't take someone who needs a nurse, for example, to administer medications during the day. They should be at some place like West Groton. Uh, we wouldn't take anyone who's incontinent who needs help with toileting. So we're really trying to uh, pick up that group of seniors that maybe two years ago participated in activities and was organized enough to get to activities, but now has started to show that decline that comes either with the onset of Alzheimer's or dementia um, uh, or what we used to call just old age, people just not being as organized and able to get to uh, activities. Um, I bring this to the board because I'm asking for your support in this. Uh, this would be a contracted position. I would advertise, just as they did 16 years ago, um, looking to hire someone who would work on a contract basis to come in twice a week and run this program for us, similar to the way Terry comes in and runs the exercise program. And it would be paid for by the $10? Uh, that would not probably fully cover the cost of the person, but just as we subsidize the exercise programs and we subsidize some of the other programs, we would partially subsidize this. So every dollar that came in for this program would go to pay the person. There would be some subsidy that we would put on it, and the only exception would be the $2 a day that would go for the lunch. Who runs it? Pardon? Who will run it? I'm the supervisor, and I will hire someone to run it on a contract basis in much the same way that Terry runs the exercise program. Okay. That will be the thing. Oh, with expertise. Yeah. Uh, I'd like to know an elopement program is. An elopement to me <laughs> means that it's... Uh, you want to elope, huh? They kind of run off and get married if you don't watch them. Uh, That's the medical term, elopement. <laughs> okay. Yeah, I was going to say, Marge I've never you. heard that one. Tell them what elopement means, when Marge. When you're in mental, working mental health, and there used to be locked units a lot years right. ago, if someone was an elopement risk, if they were at risk for taking off, and you had to watch them closely. Okay, yeah. taking <laughs> off. See, that's where it comes in. Okay. The less medical Thank term you. is is we call them wanderers. Yeah. yeah. Wanderers. Oh, no, they really. Yeah, my dad, know. when he was in Alzheimer's, would go out the door, and they had all the doors with bells, yeah. so that they knew right. when someone. Right. Yeah, and we, yeah. we had, I can't see that ever happen. You know, but I think it's a great idea. Yeah, I do too. And a wonderful program, and you know, but they can't have people like that because they're not one person running it can't be all eyes and ears. Right. So. George. Have you spoken with Carolyn Harlow uh, Mary, I, uh, about George any of this? Because Mary, did you hear me? George no. had his hand up before you. 
I'm sorry. It's all right. <laughs> My back is to him, so I'm sorry. Uh, Madam Chair, to the director, I didn't quite catch on the funding of this. Who's going to fund it? Right now, we're looking at a charge and, and, for ten dollars per person. That would be twenty dollars a week. Two dollars, four dollars for the entire week would come out for lunch. So that'd be sixteen dollars per person. The entire sixteen dollars would go towards the payment of the contract person who runs the program. But there would be some underwriting that we would do, similar to the way we underwrite the exercise programs and some of the entertainment programs that we run right now. Last question, I'm going to have to leave, Madam Chair. What is the projected hourly rate that you're talking about paying this person? You know, that's a, a very good question, George. And because it's not a position, I don't have to um, follow the personnel board's recommendation. The hourly rate is going to be what I can, kind of what the market will bear and what I'll be able to get. Um, and that's kind of TBD. Uh, when people have come to us to run like a yoga program or run the exercise program, it's a negotiation <coughs> on how much they're going to charge. And I, I envision this the same way. Thank you. Mary. Thanks, George. Mary. I asked, did you speak with Carolyn Harlow at all? If memory serves me under a different name, we did have a system, I won't call it respite, but where she had X number of people come in daily and they would stay for so many hours. They it. paid she us. Yeah, Remember she that? Talked, okay. she, she said that she'd already yeah. talked she to her. Yeah. She talked to her. her. She talked to her. Oh, yeah, you did yeah, talk yeah, to her. Yeah. That's where all this came the chit -chat from. Club. Because she's talk knowledgeable on that, and she would be a great help yeah. to you. She said she's spoken to her a lot. Okay. Yes, Carolyn has been very helpful to me, <laughs> uh, both in telling me um, uh, kind of the nuts and bolts of how she ran the program, mm -hmm. but also in helping me to devise this important set of restrictions on the kind of people we could take and we couldn't take. Because one of the, the things that I want to be clear on this is we're not in competition against West Groton. We're not trying to compete against an adult daycare program. This is something completely different. Mm -hmm. this, is, um, this is something that's occupying a niche where people don't quite need that kind of structure. They don't need a locked environment. They don't need that kind of supervision. But they're missing out on opportunities here because they, um, they're just not organized enough to make it happen. And as I said, we, we've already had three family members approach us um, that have their family lined up. They're ready to start right away with this. Carolyn did a good job when we had that in effect. Mm -hmm. Remember? Yeah. She's not interested in running it now, but she is um, uh, more than willing to act as consultant and to help me mm -hmm. to devise the program. Mm -hmm. Uh, my, my fantasy of how this would go is we would um, put together a job description and what we wanted to do. We'd put the word out there and advertise that we were looking to hire somebody to run a twice a week program like this and um, see what we get. Um, Tina shared with me that when Carolyn was hired to run the program that there were multiple applicants for the program mm -hmm. with a wide background in activities and um, geriatric work. Mm -hmm. I would imagine we would get quite a response for that. Mm -hmm. Why did we give it up? Yeah, Why did we that stop was it? That my question. Yeah. You remember? I don't know. I, I remember I wasn't working here at the time. The oh. person that was the outreach coordinator had felt that um, attendance was dropping off and they didn't have the room for it anymore. There was a lot of pressure to use that room for other activities. So when I came back about 14 years ago, they asked me to set something up that didn't take up space, so we set up the Respite Companion Program, which is still going well and will continue to be a program for people to get the Respite Companion in their own home and don't come out to a program like this one. It was really, it was a great program. Mm -hmm. I'm glad to see it um, being discussed again. I remember, yeah. A lot of social benefits I to think, this. Yeah, I think it's a great idea. <clears throat> We're also going to include the transportation in that $20. Right now, we don't charge for people to come to the center anyway. Yes. Yeah. So that, yeah. Yeah, that's, that's no that change in revenue. Of an expense for people. They paid for their lunch, then they paid for their ride, and then yeah. 
we have very reasonable cost for that program. Mm -hmm. So I guess uh, we probably need to vote on the proposal, do we? Or don't we? Well, this is something that, to, to was this for our information because you, as a director you, you, right. you do the program. Right. I, I'm asking for your support in this and I wanted to inform you about it. I didn't want this to be a surprise and for you to hear about it someplace and not think that I had talked to Carol and not understand that I really have been uh, doing my due diligence on this. We could borrow the language that all the boards use after her attending some of the finance committee meetings and everything. We could vote to recommend or to support yeah. the director in this effort. Don't you think? I, I definitely. Uh, would somebody like to make a proposal? Well, I propose that. Uh, no, you don't. No, I can't. Jerry, you can't do this. Sorry. <laughs> All right. I Thank vote you. that we support the director in her uh, <laughs> beginning of a chit chat program uh, upon uh, appropriate the contracting of a, a appropriate person at a, at a reasonable price. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay, now we're on reports. Thank you, Thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, are you here to get, give a report on the yes. friends? Good. Uh, I would like to let you know go. that our okay. St. Patrick's luncheon last month was a huge success. Uh, the food was great, and we used Roach Brothers. There have been <coughs> some comments as to why we didn't use Donlin's. Donlins was approached and they didn't want the job. <laughs> so I guess corned beef <coughs> is quite a difficult thing to take care of for approximately 100 people. And they thanked us, but not this time. Wow. Um, the school department contacted um, the Council on Aging and the Friends quite a long time ago. I think it might have been in. No, October or November about putting on a spaghetti luncheon for the seniors, which took place, I believe, mm -hmm. a week ago today. It was extremely successful. Um, the school department went way out. Unfortunately, there was they only allowed 75 people. We got rid of all the tickets, and 20 didn't show up, and we really don't know why. Hmm. I'm only assuming that they couldn't find their tickets because they were threatened if you don't have your tickets, you can't get in. Uh, the food was great. The students were outstanding. Um, many of you were there. They had a band, um, a jazz band playing outside the cafeteria. <coughs> they didn't come inside <coughs> because it was too noisy. They had a chorus sing during lunchtime. Uh, the art class made pottery that they put on each table, and the one whose birthday came the closest won the pottery. Masha's birthday was the closest, but she declined uh, taking it. She wanted someone else to have it, and she forgot I was sitting right next to her. She <laughs> given it to me. Um, I got one and I gave it away, too. They had students um, uh, serve the food. Uh, students greeted us, students parked the cars. But one thing I learned just recently is um, I was copied on an email sent by Dr. It's not Harrington, what is the principal's name of the high school? Chip. Ch oh, the principal. Um, I don't know. Anyway, uh, he specified that there were special needs children also involved in this, which I didn't know. And I found out afterwards that the case class um, <coughs> at the high school uh, decorated the tables, tablecloths, uh, paper products on the tables, and they did such a great job. And they were very rewarded internally for what they did as being part of this. Um, we are going to do this again in the future. Some people asked that we could have it next week. <laughs> <laughs> but it's going to be it perhaps another I'll year. Food. I am guessing, I spoke to Dorothy Malone, who is the admin for the superintendent. There were approximately 70 students involved, wow. plus the, um, the people in the kitchen. And so it was gr quite a great turnover for them and for us. Um, only have the best things to say about it. Uh, I've asked for the recipe for the spaghetti sauce. <laughs> Having Italians sit at the table with me 
they had not experienced sauce that good, and the chef is not parting with his recipe. <laughs> Um, we have our uh, I, can I, I just say that you did such a great job on this I don't think anyone knows how much effort went in to making this happen there was a tremendous amount of planning meetings a huge amount of discussion and Nancy was really the point person on making this happen and making sure I think that we showed support in an adequate number of people with you thank you so because it was important to support this yes place. I would just like to suggest that next year we get people to sign up. We'll figure out a better way. So yes. that we know right. why so many don't come. Right, right. Yeah. Um, and to continue on, we have our funding letter going that has gone out, and we're doing extremely well. This early in the year, we've surpassed past years. So um, that's good news. You, you, I'm sorry, what did you say that you had received more? More this year than we have in the past at this point in time. And that's all I have to say right now. Thank you. You're welcome. And uh, now we have a uh, budget monthly report, Pam. Do we have Big to vote to accept the budget? Uh, Bob, you have a Okay, you have both of the budgets and the um, <coughs> town of Littleland balance. You'll notice on the balance sheet with the uh, yeah. with the cost of the um, fund for the COA van has dropped by uh, about twenty-three thousand dollars because that was what we bought the new van with. Other than that, it's pretty much the same. The uh, the paper recycling money, which we voted to use towards the defibrillator, will now be paid out. And uh, we'll have other places that we'll get it from. Uh, if there's any other questions on that one, that's fine. Mm -hmm. And that will almost cover the cost of the AED because he's getting us such a bargain on it. And we had some donations also. Mm -hmm. Now you have the office budget and the mark budget, uh, both of which are right, along, right on uh, in terms of uh, what the monthly realities are. The, you will notice that the uh, ridership, as I mentioned at the beginning of the meeting, uh, dropped in fe from February of 367 riders for March to 281, and I think maybe a little bit of that was both weather and the uh, the fact that people needed to go into the new system. The dispatcher's hours were less because we have now gone to the dispatcher, and we'll have to figure out uh, how we're in the process of finding out how we're going to pay the dispatch unit over and wherever it is um, instead of a dispatcher, but we'll get that into the budget. Any questions on any of the numbers? Do we vote separately on all of these? No, we can just okay. vote on all of them. Uh, and your report to One question, oh, please. Oh, sorry. Yes. What are we doing for the uh, paper pickup, uh, Pam? Do they still come and get newspaper? Are you talking about the recycling? Dumpster, the yeah, whatever you want to call it. Okay, at the last meeting I reported that they told us that not only would they no longer pay us for the paper and the recycling, but they wanted us to pay to have it taken away. And the message has gone out to please don't put paper in there. Um, and uh, the word from Bonnie is that we should consider that uh, revenue stream to be defunct. Were you at the last meeting, Mary? Yes, okay. I remember, but I wondered if there's anything new. No. Go on. Any other questions? Yeah. Uh, you know, the um, director's report is always backwards looking, so all the things that I've listed in here we've already talked about because they're <laughs> all things that have come up. Uh, the one thing I would call out is, again, many thanks to the friends for your s financial support of the snow shoveling program. Boy, did that pay off this year. Um, and the friends uh, graciously have voted already to refund that program for next year, so we don't have to go back and ask for that. But again, we'll be able to provide 
um, funds to go out and shovel people out, um, help elders to get out of, literally out of their door uh, and to their cars. Um, thank you, Nancy. Was that students or were tax work people? Neither. We uh, actually paid a guy who has insurance, and that's his business, is he does snow shoveling. And he was very responsive. I have his cell phone. Um, we had seniors that called up and literally said, I cannot get my door open. And he was there within the hour and shovel, 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 got them out. And it was a real payoff. Um, you know, he gets paid, and this is a guy who's self employed, uh, and the seniors were very grateful. That's super. Yeah. can remain independent mm -hmm. one question please yes, did you get a response it's not on here that I skimmed over from the fire department on the agreement that we had with them which they did participate in the smoke and carbon detectors did you get any feedback on them I'm not sure what your question is Mary last month I brought to the board that they were starting a program. They had received a grant. They have been going out to people's homes and they've been installing smoke detectors. There is in the office a poster and there's a box where people fill in their names. And we also take <coughs> names and call the fire department and let them know that people, we went over all this last I month. I know, but I thought maybe it was just a short period. I didn't know it was a continuing program because I did use that service and they were very good. My neighbors used it. Many people did and they were happy. I was wondering if you got a feedback from the fire department, X number of people responded. Um, last you, Friday they came and they we had a presentation in the senior diner this was in the broadcaster that it was happening we had a presentation in the senior diner and they again went over the program and explained it um, I believe he said at that point he'd been to did he say 30 homes Something like that, and yeah. installed smoke detectors in almost every single one none of them had a smoke detector that was as good as the one that they were installing um, you know, I just don't know what you're asking for. Is Mary. how long is this going to be open? Are they going to continue? So they run out of money. It's a grant so, program. Out of money. That's the answer. <laughs> I don't know how much money they have. Oh. I don't know how fast it's going. I, I asked the gentleman. He said two thousand, but I'm not sure if my memory is clear. Uh, then you know more than me. <laughs> <laughs> Why don't well, you I'm tell me sure how long it's going to last? <laughs> I'm not sure about that. So how long do you think it's going to last, Mary? He said they'd get another grant when they run out. Oh, so it's going to continue on? You think it's going to be ongoing? Maybe. I don't know mm, when, it, when it's going to be. Is it just for seniors? Yes. 65 or over. Oh, good. excellent. I think uh, it's 60. Oh, 60? Okay. Any other questions? Tina. I, and again, I want to thank everyone especially the board and like the friends also for their ongoing support of outreach and Pamela for um, the excellent presentation everyone did at the selectmen's uh, meeting last month. And I'm looking forward to it and Pamela and I are already talking about how I can use the extra time. We had it all figured out before, but now you know we're really talking about more home visits, more outreach and more evening hours for um, people who need you know that evening connection. So um, basically, everything else seems to be going smoothly. The groups that I'm running seem to be going well. It's nice that um, the anxiety group meets twice a month because they um, need that um, twice a month. And living alone is once, once a month, and that seems to work out good for them also. Uh, last month was Pine Tree Park. We did do the outreach with Neshoba Nursing. And then, of course, we see Neshoba nurses at the uh, blood pressure clinic um, to every, every month and try to work together as much as possible. I'm getting ready for the Catholic Heart Work Camp to come out that last day in June, um, that first week in July, technically. And we do, we'll, we'll be accepting um, applications. They'll, they'll, they'll fax us um, an application of uh, things that people might be done around the house on like a Monday through Thursday, nine to three basis. And it's for people who um, need some help and like simple things, simple repairs, um, organizing closets, organizing, um, you know, uh, even kitchen cabinets, that sort of thing, and some painting. 
uh, trying to keep uh, people safe in their homes. So we're hoping to get uh, referrals. We usually have eight to 12 referrals every year in Littleton. And they stay in Groton at the dorms at the um, Lawrence Academy. And it's a nice program they put together, teams of six and led by an adult, under, you know, adult supervision. So, so the young, younger people, like high yes, school? Yes, I, I would say that they range in age from 14 um, to about, um, I'd say 14 to like 17. And the group leaders, you know, range from, let's say, around 21, you know, to, you know, um, quite college experienced age. people, yeah, yeah and, uh, and beyond co uh, college area, you know, um, college age people. So it, it's a good program, it's fun. They usually all get along well and go, um, to a program on Friday where they show all the work slides of what they've done and the people have a chance to talk about the experience for them. So that will be coming up before you know it, but the applications have to get in by the end of May. <coughs> We're wrapping up fuel assistance still and um, we have some things going, you know, going on, some appeal processes and some trying to work on some bills and, and making sure everyone's in good shape. Thank you. I'd like to call out that seen the um, social anxiety group that Tina started. She started that in the fall, and we did it on just a trial basis, and she's had a great turnout for that. People really like it and really feel that it's helpful to them, and so it's continued all of this time, far beyond the trial period, which I think it was six, wasn't yeah, I think it? we said it six, ran weeks. six sessions. Yeah. It ran all winter long and uh, is still going very strong. And nice job, Gina. Oh, thank it's a you. Keeper, huh? yeah, it's, a it's a keeper. It's definitely, definitely great. So we really mm -hmm. like it. And, thank and, you and it's people everyone. who yeah. don't normally come to the center. Right. right. So it's great. Any questions? Yes, ma'am. No, Madam Chair, I'd like to recognize and thank Tina for stepping in and covering for Pam yes. so efficiently. And it was wonderful. Thank, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, it's, but it's nice to have Pamela back. Yes. Oh, <laughs> sure. My thanks to the board for yeah. the lovely flowers. Well, thank you very much. Well, we're glad you you yeah, we've gone long too. But I'm sure. One quick, quick question: How are the Littleton residents aware of this student work <coughs> if well, they haven't? known about it. It's been eight years that we've had it here in Littleton. Um, so the word is really out there, but there's a small piece, a generic piece in the May newsletter that will encourage oh, okay. people to call me, um, you know, for further information. Every year we're never sure if they'll have enough people to cover Littleton, but every year they manage to, to get um, some nice uh, teams together for Littleton. So we took our chances without hearing officially and put it in the May newsletter, and then the next week after the newsletter was already in print, we found out, yes, we will be getting it again this year. Thank you. Oh. Uh, we have the last item is uh, senior communications. Uh, senior diner. You skipped yeah. the diner. The diner. Huh? Uh, well, you skipped the diner report? Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah. There's My eyes with the, with the No eyes, news the in the diner. Everything's going fine. Um, <coughs> Gail was uh, on two weeks <coughs> vacation and <coughs> everything went smoothly, which which speaks for her management, I guess, and, and her good volunteers. <laughs> so, um, so everything was fine, and, and, and it's going along. Bingo is bingo, the same. <laughs> the most feisty as ever. <laughs> right. Uh, has the attendance picked up at all? It's starting again now. Yeah. With, uh, yeah. Good weather. Yeah, yeah, I think so, yeah. yeah. Thank you, Bob. Okay. And senior communications. Right, I have two of mine already covered, but I will add to uh, Pam's when she mentioned about the finance committee uh, notifying her about the request for the 10 hours. The date will be to be voted on will be May the 5th. 7 p.m. in the middle school. I guess everyone knows that. It's, it's called meeting. Town, town Meeting. meeting. Yes. Town Meeting. Yeah. Town Meeting Day. Okay. Then the other one. Um, it's actually at the town meeting. It's yes. not just the day of town meeting. It is at mm -hmm. the town meeting. Right. And the other one I was going to bring up, which I think uh, I'll just add to, Westford has a handyman program where we're fortunate they have men come in to help local seniors, blah, blah, blah. Well, much of that I think Tina just covered with her uh, student work week in July, you know? So that goes for that. There are 
one interesting thing that I'm not sure that people are aware of with the uh, podiatry clinic medical information that anyone that's diabetic, when they are on Medicare, they're entitled to one new pair of diabetic shoes and inserts every calendar year. They register for a shoe fitting they, and uh, they get assessed for shoe recommendation and then uh, the supply company orders them and they will be notified and they come in. <coughs> they have to have a first call in and pick up a packet information which must be completed by the patient's uh, physician. You know that they're diabetic and need those shoes with insurance information and then they are called and distributed. I didn't know if many people knew that or I'd, not. I'd, I never knew it. You never do it? I never knew it. Ask the podiatry. Yeah. Do you see him of the clinic uh, yeah, when it uh, comes? Yeah. Ask him. Because well, you, you have to have the medical documentation. Yeah, oh, definitely. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Right. You would have to, but does she have the forms? Well, you ask him. You yeah. ask the podiatrist? No, yeah. she, was, she says if you want to know more, you can ask the podiatrist who comes here. Yeah, okay. Mm hmm, okay. Yeah. Or ask your own podiatrist. Huh? Or ask your own podiatrist. Yeah. Right. But you're entitled one pair a year. Yeah. Okay, the other is programs which I think we may partially cover, but they're interesting. Three of them is an insulin pump support group. I'm not sure if our uh, wellness girl covers that or not. And the other one is a low, well, she wouldn't cover a low vision support group. That would be held. And the other one is a Parkinson disease support group. There are many support groups out there, but those were the only three that I picked out. Lots That's of times, like the Parkinson's support group, it's run, you know, supported by the Parkinson's Association. Association. There's one over in Acton and yeah. at Robbinsburg that runs yeah. monthly. The low vision, yeah. Parkinson's, yeah. and what was the third it's one? It's appetite. Parkinson, yeah. low vision support, and insulin Usually pump they draw support. Away from a radius of yeah. And okay. uh, some of them are advertised in the independent. Mm -hmm. The insulin support group is at the library at the Neshoba Valley Medical Center in, in, in air. I'm sure Littleton residents can attend that. Yep. See, these are all good resource um, pieces of resource information that should be available to seniors around. It should be yep. in the broadcast it's yep. with yep. telephone they, numbers they, and locations so they can the go broadcast. there. We do put them in the broadcast room. Bob, um, would you please put in the minutes that um, we next month we will be running a free vision clinic and a free hearing testing clinic and a free presentation by the caption call people. Whoa, wait a minute. Next Whoa, month, Nelly. We will, the LCOA will be running Free a vision clinic, free hearing testing clinic and a free demonstration of the caption call program which is the phone that allows you to just use a regular phone and deaf people can uh, what's it uh, called get of messages. A, of caption. The caption call well that's excellent caption. has that gone through, uh, has that been something that hillary's come up with uh, actually no i organized all of these oh excellent yeah. that's great i wanted to add one more was with the optician do we have someone come? Because they give free of charge eyeglass cleaning and adjustment. I, I just we said we're doing we're doing <laughs> we're doing a vision clinic next month with free testing. That will be in it. Good, yes. good, good, Aaron. good. Did you hear the part about the hearing clinic? Hmm. <laughs> <laughs> what did you say? Pam? You're messing with me, Mary. You're messing with me. Um, wait. <laughs> Now you're messing with me. <laughs> Any questions? <laughs> Any questions for Mary? <laughs> okay. Uh, next staff meeting is going to be uh, May 12th at 1.30 in this room. Staff meeting? Staff meeting. Board meeting. Board, board meeting. meeting. Sorry, board meeting. And, uh, uh, and please, if you have anything that you want to be on the agenda, put it on the agenda. Put in my box or call me on the phone. 
May I make a request that the rules and regulations be changed uh, and a copy sent out to everybody so that we have a revised copy with the things that we voted yes. today? Thank you. I move that we adjourn. Second. All in favor? Oh. And we, we stuck pretty pretty close to the schedule. Um, before May 10th. <laughs>